Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be setting up the Fitbit Alta HR, that's the heart rate monitor one, and I'm going to be doing it on an Android mobile cell phone. So first of all, when you get your Fitbit, you're going to have a look and in the instructions you get very little information. Basically it just says to start, download the Fitbit app, and it also gives you this web address here. So I'm going to type in that web address into my phone browser and see what it brings up. So I'm going to go to Chrome, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to type in www.fitbit.com forward slash setup. Okay, so we've got www.fitbit.com forward slash setup. We're going to go to search. Okay, so it's brought up this now. It says setup. To set up your Fitbit device on a supported Android smartphone or tablet, install the free Fitbit app. Go to Google Play. So rather than doing this, you would be able to go straight to the Google Play Store and just type in Fitbit and it will bring up the same thing. So I'm going to go to Install. Okay, now it says to open. And now it's just going to run through different things. Right now, it doesn't give me much options here. It says to either join Fitbit or log in. Well, I can't log in because I haven't set it up before, so I'm going to have to go to join Fitbit. So I'm going to tap this here. It says check in device. Right, it says up here, which Fitbit tracker are you setting up? Well, we are setting up this one here, which is the Fitbit Alta HR, which is this top one here. Right, and it says to Fitbit Alta HR, move to the beat of you, set up your Fitbit Alta HR, so I have to tap down here. Now let's get started, it's asking for my email and a password, so I have to set up an account. Now it says I agree to the Fitbit Terms of Service, so I'm going to have to click agree there. I acknowledge that my personal data will be transferred to the United States in accordance with the privacy policy, well I'm going to have to tick there. Last one, which was already pre-ticked, it says keep me updated about the Fitbit products, news and promotions. Well, I don't want a load of emails coming through, so I'm going to uncheck that. Obviously, if you want to get information through from Fitbit, then you would leave that checked, but I don't, so I'm going to leave it unchecked. Well, I'm just going to enter in my email and my password up here now. So obviously you're going to be entering whatever email that you want to use for this service. Right, it's saying that the password must be at least eight characters long. Right, now I've gone to the next page here. Now, it only asked me for my password once. It didn't ask me to confirm it. Normally when you do a password, you have to do it twice to make sure you've inputted the same thing twice, but it didn't. It was only once. So when you're typing in, be really careful to make sure you have actually entered in the correct password that you want. Otherwise, when you go to log in, it's not going to recognize it. Right, so it's going to ask me my... First name, last name, my birthday, my height, my weight, and my gender, and then you just go to save. So obviously I'm gonna do that again off screen. Right, when it asks for height, it's automatically in centimeters, but there's a little check thing here to the side here that you can just change it to centimeters or feet, because if you're from the UK, chances are you're probably gonna be working in feet instead. And in weight, you can do it in kilograms, stone, or pounds. Right, ask if you're male or female, and then you just click done. Obviously, that's male, that's female. And then you go to save. Right, and it says save Fitbit password with smart lock. It's up to you if you type, uh, if you put save password, then as soon as you go into the Fitbit account, it's just going to recognize you. If you put never, then you're going to have to enter in your password every time you go into the account. So I'm just going to go to save password. Permission request. Requesting permission to turn on Bluetooth. Do you want to do this? Okay. So now it's probably going to try to connect to the Fitbit via Bluetooth. It says here, read our terms and policies. By typing I agree, you accept the Fitbit terms of service and privacy policy that applies to Fitbit devices and services. So I agree. Now, meet your Alta HR. Tracker and wristband and charging cable. Next. Allow Fitbit to access this device location. So I'm going to press allow. Now, powering up, plug the charging cable into a USB port, connect it to your tracker and make sure the gold pins are aligned and it's showing you how to do that. So what I have to do is, 
if you have a look there, you've got a couple of gold pins down the bottom. And if you have a look here, you've got a couple of gold pins down the top or bottom, depending on how you're holding it. So if you look, you see three gold dots. Well, we're going to have to allow these two gold dots to those three gold dots. So if we just put it on like so, you can see that it clicks into place like that. So if you put it on slightly wrong like that, just wiggle it about until it doesn't move anymore. And that's what it's going to end up like. Right, so now it says, is your outer HR powered on? Make sure the screen turns on when you tap it on. Well, it's not powered on because I haven't actually got it plugged into anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a little USB charger, probably one from a phone, and then I'm going to turn it on. I can't see anything in the instructions or the box that tells me what power this thing draws. So it's USB, so it's going to be 5 volts. I'm not sure what milliamps it's drawing, but I'm just going to use one of my more modern chargers and that should be enough to do it. I presume this isn't going to draw a lot of energy anyway. Right, so I've got myself a USB charger here. This one here is actually for an Amazon Fire tablet. This is 5 volts, 1 amp. There you go, 5 volts, 1 amp. So that should be enough. As I say, it doesn't say on the box what it is actually drawing. So I'm going to plug it into a... This is a UK power supply here. And I'm going to just plug in the, the cable like that. And straight away it's actually come up here. And it's telling me to go to the app. So without plugging it in, I couldn't do anything. Every time I tapped on the screen or anything, it wouldn't do anything. So you have to actually plug it in via the charging cable to get life to it. There we go, you see? Right, okay. So it says here, is it powered on? Yes, it is. So I'm going to say try again. And it says it's searching. So now it's going to be looking for it via Bluetooth. Now it says connecting. Okay, and now it says enter the number on your tracker's display. And I've got a little number down here, so I'm going to enter that number into here. So that's 6089, 6089. And now it says connecting. Okay, now I've got a tick on this one here. It just came up with a little tick. And it says here, let's get you to the latest version. And your Alta HR battery is low. Okay, so it needs a charge. Right, so it's just updating now. So I let it do its thing. Looks like I've got a little status bar going across here as well. The same as that one down there. Right, and it's come up with a tick there, so it looks like it's gone through. Still working here at the moment though, so I'll leave it a bit longer. Right, it says your Alta HR is up to date. You're all set. Done. Okay, now it says walk through the basics to learn how to make the most of your Alta HR. So let's go to next. Double tap the Fitbit Alta HR to turn on the display, then single tap to flick through your stats. Pressing won't work since it's not a typical touch screen. So basically, to get it going to begin with, you have to double tap. So let me just wait until it goes off. So double tap, and it's sort of saying to press down here. You can press anywhere on it, but it's telling you to press where the strap meets the actual Fitbit itself. So double tap, and then single tap to work through the different options. So that's the time, that's going to be how many steps you've done, that's going to be your heartbeat, that's going to be how much you've walked, that's going to be calories, that's going to be how many exercise you've done. You can also turn on the display by turning the wrist towards you, so just the same as if you're telling the time. So for example, it's like this, and then you move it on your wrist up here, and then it will come on. So if it's on your wrist, and you want to know the time, by doing that, you can see that it automatically comes on.
Wear your Alta HR every day to track a variety of stats. Your daily goal is set to 10,000 steps and resets at midnight. So every single day at midnight it will reset and then you start the day afresh again. So your aim is to get to 10,000 steps a day. Obviously other people will want to change this to more or less but by default it's set to 10,000 steps. Automatically track sleep by wearing your tracker to bed on your wrist. Use the Fitbit app to set silent alarms. So I presume silent alarms are basically alarms that will just vibrate. So if you didn't want to wake up your partner, then this will just vibrate to wake you up. Alter HR will buzz when you receive text messages or calls. Turn your wrist towards you to view a notification. You can configure notifications in your app settings. So that's if you get a text message you will be able to read it, it gives you an example there, it tells you who it's from and it's telling you what they're saying. Okay, again you will have to configure that. Next, all day how to wear, right, wear the band loose enough that it can move back and forth and during workouts secure the band so it stays flat, two to three finger widths above your wrist bone. So basically this is your wrist bone here, so it's saying when you're working out to have it two to three finger width. So if this is your wrist bone, it's gonna be roughly around here when you're wearing it. During normal use, you just wanna be wearing it loosely, just like you would do a watch around this area here. Wear and care tips. Clean your bands and wrists regularly with soap-free cleanser. If your tracker gets wet, remove and dry completely. Take your band off from time to time. If you notice skin irritation, please remove your tracker. See our full wear and care tips. So this is not waterproof, it's just splash proof. So it'll be fine with sweat, it will be fine with rain, but you wouldn't want to wear this if you're going swimming because it isn't actually waterproof, it's just splash proof. Which wrist will you wear your tracker on? So you've got the option to change it between left and right. I'm going to leave it on left. Select your preferred clock face, vertical or horizontal. So at the moment it's on vertical because if we go up there like so, you can see that the time is red vertical, 0950, and it's Monday the 19th. But you can change that, you can change the settings. So at the moment I've got it on time and date, but let's say if I wanted to have it on for example time and heartbeat then you can just choose that one there and then it will go to it will go to that one so let me see if I can go back so that's uh, vertical ones all different options and you can also have horizontal so for example if you wanted to read it on its side then you can read it that way so that will be more it will be more readable to do it on its side because it will mimic more like a digital clock but uh, out of comfort I think I'm going to leave it on the vertical with the date like that. You can swap your current band with Alta HR accessory bands. Just push up the latch and slide the band up. Okay, so it's really easy to change the bands on these. So let's say if this one goes faulty or it breaks or you rip it or you just want to change the colour off it so you know to match a certain outfit, let's say it's really easy. All you've got to do is on the back here you have a little tab here and a little tab here. You just need to push them in and they'll just move out only about a millimetre but that gives you enough to push the band out this way. So if I press that in there it's just moving out and then I can just push the band out. So if you have a look here closely when I push that in there all it's doing is moving that there and this little thing just is a little catch, it's like a little retaining tab that just goes into the Fitbit itself. It just clicks into place because it's sprung loaded. So when I push it in here, it will just you can hear it click into place. And once it's in it really is actually very secure. And again you can do the same on that side as well. So nice and easy to replace. If you choose that you want to have this catch here at the bottom, the straps will work both way around. It's not an orientation that you have to have because it's all symmetrical, it will work both ways you see. And once they're in it's nice and secure. Next. Now get moving and make every moment count. And it says done here. That's it. Now it says let's get started. Answer three quick questions so we can help you set the right goals for you. Let's go. Where would you like to start? Start with one, explore the others later. 
Okay, so you can up exercise and workouts, eat a healthier diet, manage my weight, up my daily steps and activity, improve my sleep. Not sure, I'm just curious. So you can choose one of those and then work your way through. There is an awful lot to this app, so I'm not going to go through every single feature of the app right now. This video is just an initial setup. So you can have fun playing around with this. So for example, you might want to up my daily steps and activity. And then it says, great. Why is upping your daily steps important to you? Because you want to lose weight, have more energy, get fit. So let's say I want to get fit. And then it has these different things here. Which is the most true about your health and fitness? Let's say this, I have a lot going on. Thanks Vince, we've heard you loud and clear and came up with three recommendation goals that you can start with. Take a look. Right, 10,000 steps is an aspirational goal to work up to. The average user gets 8,000 steps a day. Pick a starting goal for you for the week and see where it takes you. So I'm going to keep it at 10,000 steps a day, but you can change that if you want. If, for example, if you're a postman and you're doing loads and loads and loads and you still want to do even more steps, then you, know, you can up that all the way to whatever you want to up it to. I'm going to keep it at 10,000. Make this my goal. Looks good, Vince. Let's set some more goals. We suggest picking two more. Set attainable goals so you're more likely to reach them. So there you go. So it looks like they're just giving you some motivational stuff to you know, get you keen. Kind of a bit like playing a game to get these goals to make you work harder and get more fit. Now, it does seem like it's a well-made product. It is expensive though, you know, £130 is expensive, especially when you can find very similar looking ones for £30 on Amazon. And on Amazon, they have good reviews as well. So I think that the item itself, you can probably get similar quality for a lot less money. Because obviously Fitbit are the guys that put all the money into the engineering and the initial making of this. And then another company will come and they will take it all apart, see how it's made, and then just copy it for a lot cheaper. But where I say it probably will be better is, I'm sure the Fitbit is better quality, but I reckon when it comes to the actual app itself, you know, if you get really into this, the app on the Fitbit does seem to be a good app and it, the tracking and stuff will be good on it, you know, looking back at historical data and stuff. I'm sure if you bought a 30 pound one from Amazon, the app's not gonna be as good as the Fitbit one. Yeah, so there you go. That's the initial setup of the Fitbit Alta HR on Android. So, so it's quite simple. You have your smartphone, you turn Bluetooth on, it connects up with the Fitbit. The Fitbit can then download its information onto the smartphone, and it's the smartphone app that's keeping all the historical data and stuff. Well, I'll probably be just syncing this up maybe once a week, and then I've got my data on my phone. So it's quite good and it's a good excuse to go out there and try and get a bit more fit. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.